countdown then. Um, this is the history of live broadcasting with Stephen Healy. And uh, I've got a comment coming straight away. And uh, that comment is... Okay, from Stephen. Okay, and uh, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen now is a link to a blog I wrote back in the day, uh, all about Blab. And you'll notice the, the top of the uh, show card today is the Blab icon. That's where everything began. Um, in the card, you have two photographs. Um, and bottom left is when BeLive went to four people on screen, which was a major innovation. And in that photo, I don't know who you recognize, uh, but I, well, there's me, obviously, Carlos Phoenix, Tina Shang. In the photograph on the right hand side, you have Brigetti Limbanda and me. That's it. Basically, this is, well, first of all, welcome to the show. And this is the history of live broadcasting. And uh, it says I'm live now, so I can take it that I am live. That's good. And I should be able to see myself on screen in a moment. Okay, now, incredibly, live broadcasting has been around for over eight years. And we're going to see the seventh birthday of Facebook Live and be live in the coming weeks. Um, and I thought now was a good time to actually take a look at what's happened over the eight years, how things have advanced. And I've got a comment coming in from Streamlabs, um, Stream Elements, and that's to show that I'm live on YouTube. So, to, I mean, today we can go live to many destinations. I'm on the in the Live studio, and I can go live to five different destinations. If I was on Streamlabs, I could go live to 45. Things have changed so much because the original broadcasting system that made live broadcasting popular was Blab, B-L-A-B. And if I show the logo on screen, and we've got to remind ourselves, uh, that's the blog and the CEO of um, Blab was... I know I've put it somewhere down here. Sean Burry, who was the CEO of Blab back in the day. And uh, that's where it all began with Blab, B L A B. And um, in those days, Blab was the major system that we all used. Yeah, basically, what you had was four people on screen and a chat down the side. That was it. This is before Facebook Live, and this is what made it popular. And I want to say thank you to two people. Um, Phil Aston, because I got my first broadcast on Phil's uh, show. Phil's down in Cornwall and a well-respected uh, blogger and broadcaster and photographer, and uh, he gave me my first appearance live um as a guest that's how it all began as a guest and then well i mean i enjoyed it so much i thought well i'm going to go live again i'm going to run my own show and what came out of that was this which is hints tips and questions answered by stephen healy every thursday at 10 a.m the gentleman in the photograph is not Phil Aston, but John Upton. And that was the beginning of Blubbing for Britain, which uh, is on episode 390 this week. And I'm looking forward to it. We're now joined by Peter Stewart, but that was an amazing time. Yeah, because what happened was this, that before Blab, we were all on Google Hangouts. And Google Hangouts were the place to be seen. And this uh, graphic is celebrating the fact that we left Google ha Hangouts and went to blab.im. And 
at the end of the video today, I will play you a short video created by Steve Dotto, who is a world-renowned uh, live broadcaster and social media connoisseur. And uh, so that's to look forward to at the end of this broadcast. But for the moment, we're going to take a look at basically how this evolved. And we're going to be looking at all the systems. Now, um, let's go to the top of the menu. And I'm going to come back to me. Um, it's always been about community. From, from the days of Blab, it was about people getting together and, and talking. That's the, the key to the success of live video. That's the key to 390 episodes of Blabbing for Written, is people getting together and actually talking um, and making friends. Now, I've made friends around the globe. I've got friends who I met on Blab eight years ago, and they're still broadcasting, and they're still good friends. And uh, I'm going to be bringing them on to this history of live broadcasting in the coming weeks and months, because this is a never-ending journey as far as live broadcasting is concerned. We're going to be talking about people. We're going to be talking about cameras and microphones, because when we started, we just used the setup we had, which was basically you had your computer, you had the internal microphone, you had the internal camera, and that was it. That was how it began. Um, now, of course, we all have external cameras and external microphones. So we are going to be looking at equipment, broadcasting software. This has changed over the years. Systems have, have arrived, great fun fire, and we've used them, and then they've disappeared. So if you've got a story about live broadcasting, join me on camera, and we can actually talk about it. Uh, because the beginning of live was Blab. And Blab was the first system that allowed us to go live. And it's the first commercial system. I mean, it had millions of users at one point. Um, and because Blab was um, connected to Bebo, if you remember the Bebo network, Blab was connected to Bebo. The owner of, of Blab founded uh, Bebo, uh, which was later sold. And that's the beginning of live broadcasting. And you can join me on camera to actually tell your stories. Now, this is just an introductory episode. Anything can happen from now on. You can help drive this. But I am just so happy to actually be here. In fact, you wouldn't believe how happy I am to be here to present the history of live broadcasting. Uh, so below is Brigetti and myself, and on the left, if you've not recognised him yet, that's Peter Stewart. So Peter Stewart, Carlos Phoenix, and Tina Shang. And I'm hoping that they will join me on future broadcasts. Yeah, this is just basically setting the scene and letting people know that this is taking place, and we'll get more and more people involved as time goes on. Um, I want to say a big thank you, and hopefully showing this photograph is okay, but my love of live broadcasting is down to one particular person, and that person is Bob Tomlin, and we've just got a quick photograph of Bob. So this is Bob on Blab uh, back in the day and Bob was singing Fire, and um, Bob was the lady who is the lady who basically, I was, I was watching Bob do a masterclass on Blab eight years ago, and she explained what was expected in a live broadcast, because she'd been broadcasting well before that. Um, and Bob gave me, a, well, she gave me an overview and an in-depth view of how to actually do a live broadcast. And Bob ta taught so many people how you should live broadcast. And it was the that, Bob was in at the beginning, 
and she, she's helped everybody. She's helped numerous people over the years. So a shout out to Barb um, for everything that she's done for the live broadcasting community because we wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Barb and her friends. So my personal thanks to Barb because uh, she taught me what I know knew in the beginning. A lot has happened over the years. We, we've stayed firm friends and we actually track everything together. But the thing about Blab is it brought in basically the social media crowd amongst whom were Joel Com and the CEO of Blab was Sean Puri. And uh, as you can see, this debating the future of live video, and this was eight years ago. And this is how it all began with uh, people you can actually see on the video now. And I've got to say that uh, Mark Fieldman, Fiddleman was there and uh, say hello to William. And um, William is saying, Blab started it all for me. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and William was one of the, again, one of the prime movers in live video. Yeah, when we, we were getting started. And basically, as Bob does, he advises people on going live on everything to do with live broadcasting. So thank you for joining me, William. And um, hope you're well, sir. And I hope that you can join me in a future broadcast. And the comments come in. <laughs> All is saying. And over to, again, and thanks. No, thank you. Thank you. I mean, basically, when we were all new to live broadcasting, we had a lot to learn. And I still do. I mean, the, the thing, the fascinating thing about live broadcasting is that the software has improved beyond all recognition. I'm going to play you a video next week. And that video was taken in 2017. And I was interviewing the CEO of Belive, uh, that's Daniel Meyer, and it was one of the first two-person broadcasts. And the quality, the well, the content is brilliant. The quality is we've just basically now we we've just got a situation where uh, the quality is superb. Yeah, every time we go live, we know how good the video is going to be. We know how good the sound is going to be. In those days, back in the pioneering days, eight years ago, we had no idea. Yeah, we didn't know anything about sound or about video or about presentation or how you should look on camera, that you should look at the camera. We, we had to learn and learn we did from Bob and from William and uh, from Steve Dotto as well. Uh, there are some great people who've been involved in this over the years um let's come back so i don't miss anything because this is an inaugural show um anything can happen probably will but blab was the start of it because we left google hangouts we came over to blab joel kong came over to blab sean puri was on shows promoting blab um and as you can see left hand corner is my show card for today then a video i'm going to play that video at the end because this is steve dotto um another stalwart of live broadcasting actually explaining what blub is and i'm going to leave on that note bob as i say thank you and john thank you and peter as well um and the first episode of blubbing for britain with john upton were on Blab. That's where it all began. And when we're going to later this year celebrate 400 episodes of Blabbing for Britain, which is quite an achievement. It wouldn't have been possible. We've been on, we've probably been on every single platform there is. Yeah. We've been on Be Live for the last five, six years. But before that, we tried a number of different platforms, which you may remember. I've got to do my research between now and next Monday. Uh, this show will run on Mondays. And um, it's given us so much uh, that we can we can do. So we've met Sean. I don't know what Sean is doing now. Yeah, if anybody knows where Sean is, because his company 
the company he ran, Blab, was responsible for the beginnings of live video. Then along came Facebook Live, and with Facebook Live came BeLive. Um, and that was the beginning of things. Okay, BeLive celebrates its seventh birthday in October. Um, and that was launched pretty soon after uh, Blab finished. Blab, okay, I don't want to revisit things too much, but Blab was a great success. In fact, in our minds, Blab was everything we wanted it to be. The only thing it didn't do because it preceded Facebook Live was to go out to Facebook Live. It was four people on screen. And you could see and hear each other. An audience could watch live and comment, much in the same way as William's done today. And it, it, commenting and community are important parts of live broadcasting. I mean, when we, back in the heyday, when we did switch over to Facebook Live and went live, videos used to get thousands of views and hundreds of comments. Um, and I'm going to be interviewing everybody who took part in live video seven six five four three two one years ago, and uh, we'll tell the story. And there are many stories to be told because live video is responsible for community, and that's the key word throughout all this is community and bringing people together and live video is the best way of doing this live with video is the best way to tell your story and that's why i'm so excited i was well, i i've changed the way that i uh well I've, I've reworked my week which has amazed angelica uh i now go for for a run walk jog at eight o'clock in the morning wearing my fitbit and listening to rock music and whilst I was out this morning walking around town, it's a three and a half mile walk, um, I thought the history of live video. And that was just this morning when I, the idea occurred to me, the history of live broadcasting. And uh, now it's real. This is the first episode. So this will always be known as episode one. And as my good friend, David Burroughs from Sarnia in Ontario would say, you need to have an episode one. And uh, this is episode one of the history of live broadcasting. Now, it's going to take all sorts of directions in the coming weeks. I'm going to research the week before. I'm going to invite people to join me. And we're going to go live at 7 a.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. in the UK. That's where we're going to start at. We may vary the time because this is global. This is the other thing. The other major thing, I've got hundreds of friends around the world all made through live broadcasting. People I've chatted to, I mean, David Burroughs and I did a show for nearly three years. Yeah, Tina Shang and I did a show. Brigetti Limbandra and I, if I bring this back here. Okay, uh, Brigetti Limbandra and I did a series uh, about Be Live and that series ran for three years. And I did, I'm doing on the left-hand side with Peter Stewart. Peter, John and I have been broadcasting for the last eight years. And that's going to continue. Carlos Phoenix has always been around and supporting everybody and is a leader in live video and hardware and software. And Tina Shang has gone on to New Horizons with AI and, artificial and uh, virtual reality. Um, so, but it all began with Blab. That's where everything started. Okay, now a quick time check because this show is the introductory show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my research between now and next week. I can promise you a 2017, in, 2016 interview uh, with Daniel Meyer of Be Live, and hopefully a more recent interview uh, in the coming weeks. But you have been watching the history of live broadcasting with William Slays, and let's go through the roll call. Okay. Bob Tomlin. Okay, uh, taught me everything I knew at the beginning. Phil Aston, who invited me onto his show. And that's how 
my live video journey began. And there are lots more people to actually mention in the coming weeks. Um, and I do wonder where Sean Puri is now. Um, but I'm going to leave the last word today with somebody who's been chronicling um, what's been happening in live video since 2016-17. He is well respected. He is at the top of his game. So I'm going to play you a video from YouTube. I've checked out that it runs, which you always do. And this, hopefully, because this is a public video, we're okay. Um, we're going to bring this video on screen. So what I'm going to do is just take me off like so. So Blab is the system we've been talking about. We all switched from Google Hangouts to Blab. Joel Com led the way in live video. This has been, oh, hang on, got it wrong there. This has been the history of live broadcasting, episode one. I'm grateful to Mr. John Upton, who joined me on those first Blabbing for Britain's episodes eight years ago. And big shout out again to Bob Tomlin, who actually got me excited about the potential of live broadcasting in the master classes she used to run on Blab. So Bob, thank you. And that brings us to the video, which is down below. What I'm going to do is put the video full screen. I'm going to say goodbye till next week. Remember, 7 a.m. on Mondays, 12 p.m. in the UK. This is Stephen live. And just to note that today, as always, um, you'll find me broadcasting this show on Be Live. And I want to say thank you. Take care. And thank you for watching live if you're watching live you've got some if you've got any questions or comments i want to say thank you to uh matthew and to william for the loves and the likes and if you're watching live now then you're about to see a piece of history um well without further ado i'm going to take the logo off because you know that i'm broadcasting on be live so let's hide the logo and put the video full screen Switch my microphone off and I'm going to press play. So this is how it all began. Uh, this is Steve Dotto talking about Blab. Um, if I can, just a minute. Technical situation, just let me, just let me get to my, yeah. So it's Steve Dotto talking about Blab and uh, a piece of broadcasting history i'll see you in the next show next monday bye for now today's marketing tool show we are going to look at live streaming specifically what live streaming will do for you the social media marketing professional and even more specifically this live streaming app we are going to take the closest look at is blab blab Steve Dotto here, contributing editor for Social Media Examiner. Live streaming has taken our industry by storm. It all began just about a year ago when we first saw the live streaming tools that are Meerkat and Periscope. And Periscope. Now, for the first time with those tools, a person could broadcast easily to a vast audience using a smartphone as the broadcast tool of choice and just using basically Wi-Fi or even the mobility network as the network to carry the message. This wasn't like Skype or like video conferencing where you're talking one person to one person. This is broadcast, true broadcast, one person to many. It doesn't matter if you're doing a Periscope or a Meerkat broadcast or a Blab broadcast if you're talking to a hundred, a thousand, ten, or 10,000 people. It's still the same as far as the technology is concerned. So obviously, 
live streaming has some tremendous potential for us in order to build and grow our communities. Now the tool I want to specifically talk to you about today is a bit of a game changer even in the live streaming space. It's called Blab and what it allowed for the first time is for people to have conversations, real conversations and interaction with others in the same live stream. Periscope and Meerkat allowed people to comment back to you, but to bring somebody else into the conversation was pretty much impossible. However, Blab allows us to have up to four people at a time in a broadcast in these little four quadrants that we can see here on this screen here, all having a conversation and talking and the rest of the community, anybody watching it to be able to participate through chat in some various other ways. Let's look at the architecture of this environment. Now in the center here, we have the conversation of the host and different guests all having a conversation here within this window. Now the whole concept behind Blab is up to four concurrent people can be having a conversation, but it can be one person, it can be two, it can be three, or it can be four. Now these quadrants can be filled with guests. In this particular case, one of the guests is actually feeding through their computer feed and sharing that, but it could also be populated by guests coming in from the chat area. So it's a very fluid environment as far as the conversation goes. Each of the guests has their own webcam and microphone set up. Now with two of these guests, you can see that they've got what is now kind of one of the standard things for the Blab universe is using the Apple head earbuds, which actually have a fairly good microphone and give fairly good quality. One of the things you're always concerned with when you do this sort of live streaming is the quality of audio. It's far more important than the quality of video. People will watch good audio, consume good audio that has poor video attached. They will turn it off if the video is good and the audio is bad. Our ears are far more...